to it. Hello, everyone. My name is Truby. And I'm Vanessa. And welcome to No Filters, No, filters, no, no Fears, fears podcast. podcast. See, we're getting, we're getting better at it. <laughs> and the better the sound quality, the better the intro. <laughs> Definitely. So yes. today's episode 63, Abolish. It's a level five elephant. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. As you already know, we have a definition. Yes. Yeah, today is a somber and uh, important episode. So here we go. Yes. Here we go. Definition. Formally put an end to a system, practice, or institution. That's short and straight to the point. So that's what oh, abolish gosh. Abolish means. We bringing up this um, topic is because August 23rd was International Day of the Remembrance of Slave Trade and its abolition. It's a touchy subject in the sense that can you call, and we are just saying this before we started recording, can you really say that something is abolished if it still exists? And granted, it's abol abolished in certain places was the idea behind the remembrance date um specifically dominican republic uh and haiti um but even in those countries to my knowledge in haiti um there's still a practice of of and please any of our uh haitian viewers please correct me if i'm wrong or tell me where this comes from uh I recently saw a video where they were talking about how in Haiti there are still families that have slaves, right? And it's generational, generations, full families that have stayed with a particular family as their servants for for years. And they it's because they cannot afford, they don't have the education to leave the home and create for themselves. Very few have, and those that haven't just have remained that way. Um, and it's very interesting that of all the places for it to still exist, that would be it. Right. I mean, this went. This goes back to what 1807 when they started to fight slavery mm -hmm. in European countries first. Then, little by little, then they had to ban all the European countries and the transatlantic slave trade. But they still do in the, uh, the children's slave trade in the Western Africa is one example of the slave trade still being issues not, um, nowadays. Just like our season three, episode 34, human trafficking. That is yeah. still is still not abolished. Like we always say, there's a loophole to, to just because it's not a slave trade and it's not like, you know, done like it used to be, they still happening. Yeah, and I mean, it's not like we're invalidating the fact that some work was done right but it's like of course foundation for what needs for the rest that needs to happen that it's right it's like just pretty words at this point of like this is abolished you can't do this anymore right and it's also the scapegoat of well we said it was abolished right but it's not if people you know if people are doing that and you know under wraps it's not but it is right. right because it's the mentality that something like this is okay um i think it was king george the third he signed into law the act of the abolition of the slave trade banning trading enslaved people in the british empire so that number is here for you oh yeah we like stats oh yeah 400 years okay this is the transatlantic transatlantic slave trade 400 years 15 million men, women, and children. 15 million, okay? That is the population of any given city in the United States, full ass population. Um, were the victims of the transatlantic slave trade. It is one of the darkest chapters in human history. I appreciate um, this website uh, for calling it. That's called Remember Slavery. It's um, I'll send the link. It's from the UN, United Nations. Oh, yes. But the fact that they chose in human history, I appreciate, right? Because for a very long time, the rhetoric, right, the language that was used was mm -hmm. separating it to be just a, right? 
an African, a, a, a part of the African diaspora. It was only their problem. It's their history. It's right. So it was very separate. It's, it's a human tragedy. They were humans. And the more that we've, through history, kept it someone away, it, it was perpetuating that idea that somehow those in slavery were not human. Right. They were just objects. Yeah. Which we know that slavery exists in so many other ways nowadays. And it is a human tra tragedy that any individual would be treated as anything less because of color, because of education, because of anything. And, and that is a, one of the few things that people are, how do I say it? fooled by because they think the word means something when in reality, like you said, it's still happening to this day. It doesn't matter what you could call abolish. It's, it's still not yeah. when we're still I mean, fighting for it. It's a great it. starting point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's still happening to this day. But I feel like one heard the word. And, and back back when abolished, right, became the, the when slavery was abolished in the United States, when slavery was abolished uh, in the islands, um, it seemed like the magical word, the magical solution. Yeah, yeah, it's done. It can't happen anymore. Um, so it seemed like something was being done about it enough that it would quiet the masses. I don't know. Now a lot more people are care and are aware, I feel, of the Right, difference. I mean, and that's the shocking thing when we did our episode on human trafficking. They didn't think that it's not related. It's literally the same thing. We call it modern day slavery for a reason, you know? And granted, yes, it was abolished then, at that moment, at that time, People were freed. How many people? Over oh, 4 million? Yeah. But we saw, and this is, and that 15 million was only the transatlantic slave oh. trade. Okay? Not every, with, could you imagine, can you imagine how many more? And only 4 million were, were freed? Right. Y entre comillas freed, because we know it meant you are not owned by this person but man were they gonna make it difficult for you to do anything else in your life and that was anything 18, else 1808 you know it became effective the slave trade that is the thing like were you taught this in history at all in your school because in high school i didn't get we got transatlantic slave trade right and we got the uh the the whole bit about slavery being abolished, but it was like a touched upon situation. Right, not like in the talks about it. I, right. I feel like in history and schools, you know, they give you the highlights, the highlight reel of like how we became the great nation of America, but they, they fail to highlight our less stellar moments, which is equally as important because we're bound to repeat it because we don't know it. I feel like there's a lot of history missing in schools. Uh, obviously, they're not taught. Just like, as you already know, when they say, oh, you can't talk about this particular subject anymore, and you can't talk about religion, you can't talk about sexuality, you cannot talk about LGBTQ, even though now, you know, some schools are starting to again. You see, like, things that are important, you know? Yeah, I, I find it really silly really and and you only learn uh, american history unless you're in college and you can take a different course and the reality of it is it's not just oh because florida is a melting pot because this place is a melting pot the united states is a melting pot right the vast majority of us are not of this land <laughs> right right so we're all transplants so knowing the history of other places right, and their interaction with the United States, right, how it came to be, how certain, those things are important because knowing certain histories of, por decir, Puerto Rico, super important. It's a fucking commonwealth of the U.S., right? Right. So it's important to understand how that even happened. 
uh, if you use very pertinent right now, Cuba or Dominican Republic, right? Dominican Republic is where so much of this fight for the uh, abolition uh, of slave trade started. And a lot of the, the, the people that were fighting intensely in Haiti and Dominican Republic went over to Cuba, right? And that's where the Mambisas were born. It came from a Dominican Haitian man named Mambi, kicking ass. And these were fighters who did not have weaponry because they were slaves right. and could not have weapons. And they took it upon themselves to pick up and do it. So all of these things and how it correlates the United States to American history is important. We make it our business to stick our nose in, our, in everybody's business then you better believe that you got to include those histories as well. That's why I feel like learning your culture, your history, where you come from. Like, I'm just not Puerto Rican, you know, like my grandma, Somos Taino, Arawak, you know, from uh, my town is called Tuabaja. We still have all of our indigenous roots. Our language is still there. It's permanent. It's there. So for uh, you need to learn where you're from. And I feel in the history and how, Puerto Rico, what Borinquen means, this and that, for example. I'm only using me because, you know, and yeah. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I still call it Hispaniola. Is it wrong? I don't know, but I still like to call it Hispaniola because I feel like we all should still be united. This whole, like, separation with Haiti and Santo Domingo, I mean, Dominican Republic is just, I don't know. Obviously, there's history there as to why, and, you know, but, yeah, I still call it Hispaniola. But there's a but lot of people. even there, they're, they wash history does it happen in puerto rico i'm a, with the indigenous with the indigenous people and look uh, in the united states how is it and i can only use florida as an example because that's where i went to school yeah how is it that a place miami okay a place named after an indigenous tribe okay right how can you not teach more history of that not because oh now it you know it because out of gratitude you are on land that belonged to others that history good bad and ugly mm -hmm. i feel like there's a fear that they don't teach that history because they don't want to create like a culture of students that now hates america because they it's already created <laughs> because when you have to find it out on your own and you see how shitty everything was you're like well damn you know, it's funny because most people that live in Florida, they don't know that Florida has indigenous land and all the names are born. Mikasuki, Seminole, so many. And they don't realize that this is an indigenous land. Like, obviously, if you read history, uh, Florida, the Caribbeans, they were part of that, you know, but they don't realize that. I'm like, yeah, but it's whitewashed now. Like, yeah, we still have the names, but... Only like Mikasuki has like the actual indigenous land because I went to it and I actually like saw it and mm -hmm. saw the, their houses and their, you know, interact. But that's that's about it. You know, they had a, a bigger. Um, it, 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 it cost me to say this because it's like. The people who are native to this land were allotted. Right. A certain amount of land that over time has been lessened. More land has been taken away from them. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is why indigenous people, it, at least in the U.S., from what I can perceive, and this is an opinion, this is not a fact, it's are so cautious of being, for lack of a better word, infiltrated. Right why they handle, like when we talked to, to Jody, right, that she mentioned how they have their own police and it, and this is why when somebody disappears, it's very difficult because you're dealing with jurisdictions and things like that. Exactly. But you cannot blame them for wanting to uphold those things because look how much was taken from them. And I think the same thing goes for, for that idea of when people say, oh, because slavery ended so long ago, like get over it, well, you know. You know Those what I things persist. What I find very uh to me personally, I find it to be very uh, offensive or lack of a better word, that they are paying 
the indigenous people that live here in Florida a, a amount of money, you know, for living in their own land, you know, because they were, you know, because their land were taking away from them. So now, oh, reparations. Yes, I, I mean, I don't I know mean, how they feel about that. Our, reparations is something that uh, I know has been sought for different reasons from from different. Uh, communities, right? right. Um, and I, I don't disagree, and I don't think it's like an. I don't think, for, for example, the indigenous people, because mm -hmm. of how their culture and tradition is, I don't believe that they were like, "Yo, America, reparations, what's up?" Right. right I do right. feel like it's America saying, "Hey, I feel guilty. Sorry, la caramo. Can we?" Can we do this? Would that work? I mean, they're not going to say no because they've already lost so much of their land, and it takes a certain amount of money to be able to to maintain right. in, a, in a space that outside of your bubble takes money to function, right? So the reparations to a point is the minimum that you know the government could do, right? To to make some sort of amends. It is offensive because all you have to do is, you know, stop taking their damn land. Right. And hence why, again, our last episode, we mentioned line three that's happening in Minnesota because it's going stop through. trying to put a damn pipeline through things. Right. Do we need, some, we need oil that bad? I mean, greed is so fucking high. And that's what it is. It's, it's, um, it's led by money, not humanity, not, not actual need. Right, it's perceived need, and it's not thinking necessarily of future. It's thinking of how we gonna make them dollars right now. And they don't even realize that it's not helping anybody in the long run. Because, because and look at how many things we're paying for now, twenty twenty one, because of things in the past that were thought about in the moment to make a quick buck, that built that grew to be something that has actually been of detriment, right? the increased amount of production of cattle, et cetera, et cetera, has had its heavy downfalls. Right, like like ivory, you know, like killing hunting games and things like that. Now it's like we don't have any, what's the last animal, like the last white rhino, whatever. The white rhino. Um, there was a, a giraffe, the white one that just, pobrecita, they killed her, you know? Like... That's that that leads to to what we have now. Like now, all the animals are being extinct. Like, what are we gonna do now? Like bear hunting. You know, little things like that do accumulate. You don't see it, but now your kids will not know what a white rhino looks like only by pictures. You know, there's not gonna be an actual. You know what I mean? Yeah. So little things like that. You're right. That it's it, they're gonna be paying for it in a, in a, in a long. You know. In the long run, and then la comida, as you already know, um, yeah, every, food, like everything is inter interconnected. We talk about this all the time, and you know, and kind of connecting it all to abolition, specifically of slave trade, and remembering what that was. Again, right? One of the biggest diasporas has been the African diaspora all over the globe and not by choice, right? Not that a lot of immigrants that leave their country is necessarily by choice. They leave, they feel forced out of their home because if not, they will die. They will not have a future. But in particular, the African diaspora consisted of people being yanked from their home, thrown on boats where they may not even make it the trip because they could get some life-threatening disease. Okay, and it, and then just being given to someone like here is a gift, or here buy this like you would buy a lettuce here buy this guy. You know, so I have I have here it gets me riled up real quick. <laughs> like no, my because, chest got really hot. I mean, um, I don't blame you though. It's just that you see things happening and you're like, how do you think this is right? So yeah. 
The day is marked to remember and honor the victims of the slave trade and systemic racism that they endured. Endured sounds real past tense for systemic racism that is still being fought against today. Yeah, we had it a whole last year. to foster critical analysis of such practices that might transform into modern forms of exploitation and slavery. It was created with the best of intentions, right? And we're not here, at least, and I'm, I'm sure that Chubi is not here either. Like, we're not here trying to knock this Remembrance Day or knock the idea of abolition. It's just, it's not a one-part scenario. Right, right. It doesn't end with, okay, we send a little paper. We told everybody they can't do it. Because you tell a little kid you can't have the cookie, you know they're going to find a freaking way to get the cookie. Right. You know what I'm saying? That they told you, and then they go ask abuela. Abuela might say yes. But it's true, though. Or they yeah. might find a way of eating it under the table hidden, and then you never know they have the cookie. Loopholes. There's Loopos. always a way. So the intention and having it as a springboard. And if it is a day of remembrance, I feel like there should be so much more awareness around that time on that day to be like, I mean, they put every other damn thing on blast when it's important. If this is a day of remembrance so that we do not repeat this, if the intention is analyze critical analysis of such practices that might transform into modern forms of exploitation and slavery we have failed that freaking mission hardcore did you hear anything it has about morphed it? into human into human trafficking it has morphed into turning like uh, your your day-to-day -day, like you know she comes and cleans my house to some of these individuals that do this for a living right clean they have also been subjected to being taken in by a family with the best promises and whatnot, and then becoming slaves. And there's nothing sexual to it, but they are there to work, and that's it. That's it. And what's lorded over their heads is either their immigration status, Ex the biggest, or one. their or their or their financial needs. Like if they don't have, you know, the the education or whatever to get a job beyond that how are you going to feed your family and they put these fears into people and it's I feel like if there's not awareness uh, this is what we're remembering and this is why we're remembering it this is the history these are the points that you should know 15 million men women and children traded as property is something to be made aware of because if not it was just a nice day right like Veterans Day or 4th of July that gets turned into fireworks and barbecue day. Everything right? Becomes a party. Mm -hmm. Everything becomes a damn party. So this happened when? On the 23rd. The 23rd fell under 23rd what day? 23rd. Yeah. And it's under... That was a Saturday, Monday, right? In 1791? I don't know. <laughs> We, no, I'm talking about now. Did you hear oh. anything about it? No, we oh, didn't. No, you knew coño. I didn't hear <laughs> squat about it. Nothing. Nothing. And not even a post. Not a. Nothing. Anything. Nothing. And mind you, the the reason how we came up to, with this is because I like to research things that are like not as popular, lack of a better word. But I, that's how I came about this remembrance of the slave trade. I'm like, it happened in history and yet nobody talks about it. That is the reason why we, how I found it. Yeah. And you found this in tandem with uh, another thing, which is uh, disappearance. Yeah, it was um, the, the International Day of the Disappeared that happened in August 30th, which is happening today. Yeah, I'm the, the observance of it is today, which is... Um, is to draw attention to the fate of individuals in prison and places and under poor conditions unknown to their relatives or legal representatives. Um, it started in Latin America, Federation of Association. So basically what is happening in Cuba and Afghanistan, these people disappearing. Um, the, 
political prisoners. Political which is prisoners. Absurd mm-hmm. because a lot of them, yes, some of them have been speaking out against the government, right? And that's they don't like that. That is not gonna happen. So they throw them in prison. But it's people that aren't involved in any way with politics. They're just fucking tired of starving or they're tired of being oppressed. Right. <laughs> and they get thrown in jail. M- mothers, children at this point are being thrown in as political prisoners in Cuba. Right. This day, which is um, the remembrance of today, is like includes all those whose families have lost contacts as a result of compl- conflicts, natural disasters, or other tragedies as well. So that's included in that. I mean, we also felt that it was important to mention both of these together because the fact is that even during the slave trade, they were absolutely prisoners. There was families left behind not knowing what happened to their mother, to their brothers, to their sisters, to their fathers. So those were the first in in disappearing into these prisons. And they may have been big-ass mansions in Georgia, but that was a prison. Right. Right? And also, so many of the political prisoners in in Cuba, the vast majority of them are people of, of color, right? Black or brown that are in prison. And in Afghanistan, I mean, they're doing it to their own people, but they're disappearing like this, just right. into thin air. And the minute you ask or say something, you also go ahead and disappear too. So, yeah, I mean, it's a week apart, barely. And they're uh, connected, both of them, yes. because in the slave trade, they also gone missing. And people just go disappearing all the time. And guys, we're hearing, you know, Afghanistan and Cuba, because those are the, the two foremost right now in news and everything else. But the reality is political prisoners in Russia. Oh, yeah. Insane amounts. Czechoslovakia. What is the commonality in a lot of these in China, in Korea? What is the commonality? Oppressive regimes. They don't like what you've got to say about their poor leadership. So they're gonna silence you. So they shut you up the only way they know how. Throw you, throw you in a prison. Right. Yeah. It is insane, and these are things just like the the concept of abolished or to have abolished to think that these disappearances don't really happen how do you how do you figure how do you figure how do you make up for the 900 plus people that have gone disappearing in cuba how do you make up for the countless people that have gone missing in places like dubai iraq afghanistan like so many places that it is a constant it's like saying like we've talked about this before too Oh, genocide isn't a thing. Genocide happens every day. And that is another thing that the families will never get to see these people again, if. That's a miracle. That's a big if, if they do. Which makes me really wonder about these organizations that were created or put in place with, with the intention of finding these people or of of doing a certain type of work, what's really being done? I don't know if it's my lack of understanding or my lack of research on it, or just that I would hope that you would hear a lot more about and from these organizations about the people that they've been finding, about the work that they're doing, because it is incredibly important to take innocent people out of death traps, like the prisons where they keep political prisoners. Right, but also if the family of those political prisoners don't know that they're missing, they can't speak and out, can't speak out about it. But if they do, you already know something could happen to them as well. So it's like a domino effect. Everybody's just. But I, I feel like the organizations themselves, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and there's like, for example, there's laws for human rights in places. There's of organizations course. and mm-hmm. human rights organizations. La están cagando. Like, where are you? Granted, there's a lot of conversation that needs to go down because there are a lot of factors to weigh in yeah. because you can end up losing a lot more people than saving them. I understand that. But I feel like there's a big lack of you know, shocker education 
for the masses to understand the importance, the significance of right. this. And that's why when somebody hears political prisoner, even when you tack on a number like almost a thousand, it's like, oh, I'm so sad. Right. And also like the human rights, um, I don't, I don't know if they could intervene in another country like that. I mean, do they have their own human rights for, say, Cuba? Like, that's that's the thing, you know? Yeah. But even so, like, for example, already, if we're using Cuba as the example, the those that fight for human rights, mm -hmm. Cuba has, has violated so many of those laws set in place universally for human rights. Mm-hmm. And have not intervened. That's what I'm saying. Like, why? In any way. Right? Why? So they have to you're, you're absolutely right. Like, <laughs> what is it? And if, if it is those conversations of, like, you can lose more. But it's been 60 plus years that they have been pulling this bullshit. If you want to say that it was, okay, 20 years we didn't know, you still had plenty of time in that timeline. Right. And the same applies to places like Afghanistan. This is not new. Right. We've been there for 20 years. And shit still hit the fan. Um, well, see, when it comes to things like that, I just feel like, okay, one person uh, tried to help and then they failed. Another tried and it failed. But why can't you just keep trying until something happens? Well, to uh, the idea is also would be to not try the same thing. <laughs> No, I hope which not. Is, which is which is sometimes what has happened, and I'm not just talking about right now. Right, like right. In, in general, the same approach is attempted. We'll cut this off, or we'll make this treaty or this agreement. Right, it protects one, but it does not protect. Right, or it yeah. protects maybe the government entities, but it doesn't necessarily protect the people. There's always those things. So it, it's... It's a lot of um, more in-depth thing that we obviously, both of us do not know much about. No. <laughs> and we're not going to sit here and pretend that we do. We know, you know, what we've heard, what we've read, and we know it's deeper than what we just say, oh, just go do it. Obviously, it's easier said than done. I know there's laws in place, and there's like, you know, um, you need to get together and be like, okay, how are we going to execute this? And how are we going to go move forward with it? I get it. Yeah. But somebody out there has tried, hopefully, you know, for places like this. Yeah. Um, do you have any quote quotes related to? I do. Um, this is from the UN Secretary General Antonio. And this was, I mean, I want to see where this article was from. It was very recent, actually. It was about on this August 23rd. This is, I think, the, the only article I've seen thus far that mentions about International Day for the Remembrance of the Slave Trade and its abolition, why it is observed globally. Globally, I didn't hear crap. I didn't hear a How upsetting. Thing. How upsetting. And it's upsetting to me that more of us don't get upset for, for this kind of information being kept from us. You already know. We talked about it's it. It's history. But you already know the bubble. People love their bubbles. The bubble. The United Nations decided to commemorate this day as the International Day for the Remembrance of the Safe Trade and its abolition. Okay. And uh, Antonio Guterres, I'm not, and it's not Gutierrez. It literally says Gutierrez. So that's what I'm saying uh, <laughs> on his Twitter. The transatlantic slave trade ended more than 200 years ago. Sadly, we continue to live in its shadows of racial injustice. We urgently need to hashtag fight racism, dismantle racist structures, and reform racist institutions. Ending slavery's legacy of racism is a global imperative for justice. All we could do is agree with him. Yes, yes, and yes. And I would take it even further because here's the thing, and this mm -hmm. is... And this is good because everybody needs a place to start, especially for big ass things like this, right? They started abolition, right? Let's remember the abolition. Things are still happening in between abolition and remembering the abolition, right? right he said right. 200 years ago this happened and it's still happening. Don't stop at just racism because you 
are doing a disservice to every other underserved community that has been put into slavery. Right. Right? Or been, because I, I know that they've changed um, the verbiage, who have been enslaved that are from Honduras, from Nicaragua, from Taiwan, from Malaysia. It, it, it's all valid. It's all valid and it's all still enslaving a human being. That we talked about in our previous episode, like we mentioned, um, the organizations that I follow, like um, and the End of Movement, Love 146, mm -hmm. and A121, those three companies are the top three right now that are like, they start as a small ass company, and, like we want, like they start as a small company, then they just continue, continue putting the work for, to end slave, slavery, modern day slavery. So it starts somewhere. We just gotta keep at it. We love it so much. I mean, I love it, but if you wanna make a change for the future, like, you know, you gotta keep doing it. And because there are so many layers to it, it's like we talk about, you know, mental health and how we need to unpack certain things. We need to unpack a lot of these existing ills in the world, racism, prejudice, right? There are things to unpack on there. The reason we don't find a viable solution, right, is because we don't unpack all the layers of it. We treat the surface thing, the symptom, whatever is hurting at that moment, right? Oh yeah, back in because Thomas Jefferson was a shit because he had slaves, right? They didn't know the difference. They didn't have the understanding that mentality. Now, now we know better. Learn, grow from there. But part of it is also unpack. Why did they then make that mistake? Not get true history. Cancel that. You have to learn from it. It happened. But then, Acting like it's just a now thing is so ridiculous. Right or like. They think that because they don't hear it, they're like, it's not happening. Yeah, you cancel it. It, it just never happened. Uh, oh, that, I wish it was that easy. Child, I would cancel so many things. <laughs> right, and it doesn't work. It's not that easy just because you're no. not hearing it. Remember, there's loopholes, there's quietness, there's like behind the scenes of things. And they, the, <laughs> the ever-present days, count on that. Right. They count on people being comfortable in the bubble. They count on surface information, right? Or doctored information being enough, being only, that's what you feed on, not going deeper, which is why these things can still happen. Remember what we said um, that it was like, what, $1.5 billion in, in, of slavery? That's how much they make? Who's gonna wanna stop a business if they make that much money? Yeah. Big Pharma is bumping. They kill people on the daily, but the bank is popping, right? They're not going to want to stop. Sick people are more valuable to them. Exactly. The same thing applies to underserved communities or communities that don't stand up for themselves or don't have people allied to them right. that can cause or create more, more change. Right, that's why, that's why when we talked about um, in one of our episodes about the governor that, you know, controls that area, you know, like in Florida, the Gasanti guy and all his rules and his, yeah, like that. He's not for the people. He's not for the well-being of the city or wherever he, you know, he's in. Yeah. It takes one person to want to make a change for the better that's going to benefit everybody. El pueblo. It takes the people knowing how to discern better, really looking into your elected officials, not just the president, your immediate, in your municipalities, in your wherever you're living, exactly. your local state officials, your government officials, like yeah. looking into them, seeing what they really stand for, what has been their past, what have they said, have they grown from that, have they stood behind the things that they've said, because it's very easy. It's a, it's, it's a murky place, politics. That's why I'm personally not a fan, have zero interest in it. But 
the fact is it affects me. So I better know something, <laughs> you know? And I mean, the Cuban people would have never imagined that their liberator, the person who started a revolution with so many promises and beautiful speeches, because damn could Fidel give a speech, would be the cause of where they are right now. People can talk a good game when they want to get the job. Exactly. Repeat it. And then history. surprise, by the way, I'm communist. Fun fact. Oh, that's that's a hell of a news. Right. This is a repeated history. It's like we haven't learned from Hitler. We haven't learned from what's his name? The guy from Venezuela. The other guy. Yeah. Right, Chavez. Sorry, you know my name. I'm like over here like that guy. It, it, it's, it's the same thing in Venezuela. Same thing. Talk the pretty game. Fooled a lot of people. And the same case, we can say the same thing here in, in the U.S. So how many, and we don't have to go to grand scale, you know, POTUS. We can stay within regions, governors, mayors that were elected into office with a lot of promise and then their yeah. cities are devastated because they feel lied to or taken advantage of. And politicians know how to, it's no longer a game of like, I want to do this because it's right or good. It's who do I need to talk to to convince them and get the numbers? Right. Which demographic? It's a marketing game. It's a campaigning situation. Not campaigning for where you stand, campaigning just to get the votes. Right. And then do whatever the hell you want to do. So... And granted, it's not every politician, but those that have better intentions get lost in the muck. Yeah. And it's created a, um, a climate of individuals that don't believe in their government, right? And granted, by comparison, by comparison to other governments, we ain't got shit to complain about. No. Because we can we have the right to complain, right? Um, and this is, I, I talked about this with somebody the other day and I wanted to smack them. Yeah, but it's like everything else. Just because somebody else's day was worse than yours, it doesn't invalidate that your day was bad. This is not the same thing. No. We're talking about hunger. We're talking about political prisoners. We're talking about a whole lot of difference. Yeah. That yes, the U.S. got flaws the U.S. has its things. But do any of us, if we don't like it that much, do we really want to go and try Afghanistan on for size? Right. Do you want to go try Afghanistan on? I, I don't. Do you? Definitely <laughs> not. No. I know that as much as I love Dominican Republic and I loved living there, the things that are happening there, the, the, the climate, not a place I necessarily want to be, especially because somebody that looks like me does not do well. Right. Okay, I, 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 I'm an affront to a lot of things. So we need to count our blessings and use it as a pool for good, right? That's what we're trying. That's what we. Here we are. <laughs> um. Did you say you had corticos, or you just said one? Because it goes to what we were saying earlier. William Wilberforce said, you may choose to look the other way, but you can never say again that you did not know. Oh, yes. The one we shared earlier on our page. Yes. I love that one. Yeah. But it's true. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. You are choosing to ignore this. This one will, will be my last one. I'll read two. Mm-hmm. This one is Frederick Douglass. Yes. Frederick Douglass. Knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. I love that one. I would like to just drop this nugget of gold 
a lot of inventions that we get to enjoy or even got to enjoy back then before slavery was abolished. Beds with springs. The mailbox, I think it was, or the, the switch. A bunch of things that have been, that were used for efficiency that made everybody look so bougie and cool were invented by slaves while enslaved. They may not have gone to school, but you cannot stop a brilliant and creative mind from mm -hmm. creating and from innovating. And once they were able to study and push forward and build lives, they only added more. How much, how many doctors and scientists, right, that are descendants of slaves have gone on to create and innovate for the good of all. Just, just go and drop that nugget. When I was um, in high school, one of my teachers said, if you want, if you want the population not to know something, put it in a book. Mm -hmm. Something along those lines. Because um, she was referencing the fact that I don't know how many people have picked up a book nowadays. Many people might not like to read, might not like to whatever. But yeah, pick up, put it in a book. No one's gonna, um, no one's gonna know about it. You want to put some information? Put it in a book. Oh, yeah. So it says, if you don't want them to know something, put it in a book. They'll never yeah. read it. This was a saying that was widely used during and after the segregation of schools. And as I know, it's still being used today to display the ignorance and lack of knowledge of African Americans. That's where that quote comes from. I have a badass quote. <laughs> and Chubby's ch Cody quotes. <laughs> no, no, no. That's your thing. I love it. I love when we have like a quote quote like <laughs> bam bam is it because bam. you reminded me of it and i was like oh my god that would be perfect to share because maybe you didn't see it so i was like no you no know? that is a wonderful you brought one up also during the women's when you gave a quote that was off the hinge is good um slavery is such an atrocious debasement of human nature that it's very extirpation is not performed with solicitous care may sometimes open a source of serious evils, if not performed with uh, solicitous mm -hmm. care. The unhappy man who has been treated as a brute animal too frequently sinks beneath the common standard of the human species. The galling chains that blind his body do also fetter his intellectual faculties and impair the social affections of his heart. To instruct, to advise, to qualify those who have been restored to freedom for the exercise and enjoyment of civil liberty and to procure for their children an education calculated for their future situation in life. These are the great outlines of the annexed plan which we have adopted. This was the hope, right? Again, I said, best of intentions and started in a good place. This is from um, pamphlets and essays and letters written uh, about, uh, this is for Pennsylvania Society for Promoting the Abolition of Slavery in 1789. Um. Okay. The intention was there. It does not stop there. Right. Knowledge doesn't stop the evolution of people and our understanding and how we treat one another and what is right does not stop. So now let's match the laws and the treatments with what is known. Don't just keep it in your head because it's a great idea. Exercise mm -hmm. it. All right. Final thoughts? Final thoughts. I am glad that a day remembering not just the abolition, which we know is still in process, not actually right. abolished, but the fact that slavery this is acknowledged because we have a tendency to not acknowledge extremely tragic occurrences in history, the Holocaust, the African diaspora and all of its incarnations, right? We have a serious problem acknowledging those things so that a day of remembrance was brought to us. Um, I think is, it is beautiful and important, but I also feel like it can't stop there. And I hope that more things follow it. I would like to hear more about this when it rolls around. August 23rd, 
should be something not celebrated, but like, okay, it's a day of remembrance. This is what we're remembering. Right. The it should be talked here. about in schools, not just, yeah, there were slaves. It was bad. Done. No, talk about history. Educate. We're, we're churning out simple individuals if, if we don't give them full information. And they won't know to look for more. This is what it so, is. Yeah. That's my final thought. I totally agree with you. And <clears throat> I always say a reading is essential. And I hope you guys um, check us out on our next episode because we're going to reading. It's going to be reading is essential. We're going to talk about reading, about just everything. I feel like we always say it in every episode. But, yeah, inform yourselves. Because, look, I was reading something and I found out that even though we heard about it, we didn't hear how bad it was and the the, the, the numbers and the fact that it's still happening today. Yeah. Just because it has a different name, you know, slave trade, human trafficking, same thing. Yeah. Different names. Remember, words evolve. And the way that people do things do too. So just keep in mind that, you know, there's something going on every day and just – Try your best to, um, if you're able to help someone in any way you can, do it. Don't stay ignorant to things. Read. And just, um, I don't know, I like like you said, we're not an island. What affects you affects us. It affects everybody. Therapist, but, you know, we do read. And, you know, we make our own conclusions from it and the actual facts and the statistics from it. So you take with what you heard today as you will and do your further information, I mean, research. And find the people that you know that the information is viable, right? Don't just take the first bit of information that you find as, as law. Right. We yeah. use so much when we become complacent. And I feel like we've been geared right, by the vase of the world, uh, we've been geared to be, co to be comfortable in becoming complacent with whatever information we're given. And it makes us sometimes react less human to things that could really use our attention and our passion and our, our know-how. We all have our own gifts for a reason. It's not just within our own nucleus to, to be great for that. It's to lend those those gifts to greater purposes, right? Not that all of us are gonna go out there and be Nelson Mandela, but like, you know, we in using those gifts even within our circles, it starts to trickle, right? Let be good things would trickle on to future generations, not the same caca. Right, we have to learn from our history to be better. Now that you know yeah. better, do better. Do better, a thousand percent. So with that being said, please stay fearless. Stay fearless, fam.